right. So why don't we go on to our Academy training segment tonight for our Academy training segment. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about who we think is good for sealed, right? So this is your pre-release guy that we feel is the most beneficial currently that you can have. Um, not a hundred percent. Like we are not your, the, the ultimate be end all, but we have, I have played quite a bit of sealed. So is Alex. And so like, I think that this is, this is a fun event. I enjoy sealed so much. Um, we actually just played sealed in my locals. There's only four of us that played, but we played sealed in the locals. It was super fun. Uh, this week I got a bunch of cards I don't need. Um, but I mean, Hey, whatever. It, it was, was fun to play. Format, so yeah, it was super fun. So, and it was kind of like some of the guys were like, Hey, this is prep for, you know, next weekend. I was like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let's do, let's do some sealed. So prepare for our Academy training segment. All right. Welcome back to our Academy training segment. Tonight, we're going to be talking about Twilight of the Republic sealed. This is our analysis. This is, I don't know if it's good. I hope it's good. And this is sure as hell. Do not play this card. Um, so those are the three categories, baby, that we are looking at tonight. But Alex was kind enough to put some stuff together for us. Um, and I thought it would be fun to review. We did this last set. Um, and I think we went into a little bit more detail, so we're not going to cover every single unit that you could play, but we are going to make our guide available in the notes of the video. So if you are watching this after the sh afterwards and you're not watching it live, you're welcome to go check out the guide. I've made it public um, for anybody to view uh, once the video's live. So, Alex, why don't you kick us off? Yeah, I was actually reviewing the one from last set, and I don't think we're terribly far off on the large majority of things. So that that's that's good confidence builder right there. <laughs> uh, so here's the leaders that I think would probably be good for sealed. Again, it's sealed. So not not constructed. We'll get to that later. So I think Yoda is probably good. It's because drawing cards, stacking your deck. You know, if you don't need something right now, put it on top of your deck, draw the other card below it. Um, and I think just blue heroes is probably pretty solid in this set. Uh, there's a bunch of like cool stuff. I Who think Dooku's, yeah, right. I think Dooku's good too. Um, Dooku's held back a little bit by separatist cards not being uh, there's not a, a crazy amount that like wow you, but also just cheating out stronger units is generally really good. Look what Han did last set. Mm -hmm. Um, I like Wat Tambor a lot, honestly. I think he's cool. He's, he's he's kind of funky. How he's like kind of aggro-y, but also kind of exploity. But just like getting a, a plus two plus two, if someone died, is just huge in limited formats. Like mm -hmm. that generally will push you over the edge. So that's why I think he's good. I think Maul will be good. Um, half of that is just because he's a six attack leader. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also giving units overwhelm. Uh, you end up trading your units off and still doing damage, and that's pretty good in a game where they don't have a lot of uh, resources to you know counter that. Um, and lastly, I think Ahsoka and Grievous, your starter leaders that you're always going to get in your pre-releases this set, I think are pretty solid, mostly because putting like something in, uh, you know, giving it Sentinel just slows it down enough that you can... You know, you might live a turn longer from that, or you might be able to block. Maybe, maybe they have like one unit, one unit out there, and you have a droid that's one one. Give it Sentinel. Now they can't attack your base. A lot of seal is about building small advantages. And I think Azoka's just solid enough that uh, if your opponent doesn't have a lot of uh, board control, she just kind of gets out of hand. I mean, if you have three. If you have two units on her flip turn, she comes out as a 5-6 on for 5, which is just hard to deal with. So yeah. I, I, I I think she's good. Uh, good enough to be like, you can probably build a deck around her. Yeah, I, I actually, and I agree, and I think some of that's because I think some of the way the set is built is built to help you spawn units, right? So we haven't gotten to all those cards yet, but you're able to spawn units, do different things, and I think, you know, like, 
some of those common cards just like really hit the bank. And that's one of the things that she and Grievous really want um, for it. I'm excited to see Maul in there, right? Because like I was a little concerned Maul would not be good in sealed, but I actually almost think he's better in sealed than he is going to be in deck building for the pure fact that the way he works is that they're going to have such random decks. You're going to be able to walk over top of some of their decks pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And by the time you flip Maul, that you're, you could just seal the deal with Maul. Like, yes, you don't get a lightsaber. Yes, you don't get all these other crazy things. Um, but you can build a, re- a red green deck and you can have General's Blade on Maul. And now he's like, what, a 9-9 a nine, nine or something like that? Just like, pff. and you can play something for cheap after that. Like, I hope, and, and there's no rivals fall on this deck in this set, right? So, right. and he, he, you know, still the leader with the strongest attack. <laughs> like, that can't be understated if he just swings in for six. And if yeah. you put a Sentinel or something with, like, Revis, your 1-1 droid, he just does five damage to your base now instead of six. <laughs> yep. Right? So, like, he's still impactful. Um, Yeah, so I think those are, like, solid leaders. It's, it's kind of weird because it's like you got one heroic blue, but you got like both green villain, but like a red villain and a red hero and a yellow villain. So it's like it's kind of all over the place. Yeah. But I think those are solid enough leaders that I would build decks around. Yeah. Uh, the leaders that might be good. Uh, most of these are kind of dependent on your pool slash they're they're fine leaders upon themselves. Um. I have an asterisk next to Nala Say. I usually use that to indicate that it's probably between levels. Uh, Nala Say really depends on your clone pool, I guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I think she might be good with that if you have a bunch of really cool synergies. Uh, You just have more options and generally more options and limited is very good. Uh, But I don't think she's great upon herself enough to be good and probably good. Uh, I next I have new Gunray, uh, the getting a bunch of units uh, back <laughs> or getting a unit back after basically killing off two of them is really good. Uh, but like if you don't have a lot of exploit cards or like cards that kill your own guys in general, he doesn't really do too much because he's you know he's only a two six. Yeah, uh, he but he's solid he- enough. Like you get a return on your exploits. He does. And and like, so yeah, he's like a conditional leader, right? He's that one that says, Hey, if I get a bunch of cool stuff that fits with him, he's probably fits into that really good tier. But if you don't get anything, I, I, I won't be running him. Um, but he is blue villain. So it does give you a little bit of an advantage. I think in some of the card pool that we have, uh, for blue villain, but yeah. Um, up next is a, maybe a controversial choice. I have Obi Wan, and he might be good. Um, I think he might be better in limited than he is in constructed. But I think it's just the fact that he heals a unit is pretty big in limited. Um, just one damage, and then also being a sentinel, a four seven sentinel that can kind of heal himself as well. Uh, it just performs better in the field of limited. Uh, you know, it allows uh, it limits about trading a lot of it. Uh, so if you trade and then are able to heal, you can continue trading uh, positively. Uh, next one I have is Captain Rex. It kind of again really depends on your clone trooper support if you got a lot of coordinate stuff. Um, at the very worst, if you have nothing to play, at least he gives you a 2 2 for two (laughs) you don't want to do it much but at the very least he can add on units so you you don't have a super dead hand Uh, but yeah there's a lot of just troopers energy with him and if you and if you get the the card that cards that boost the troopers and give them the plus ones and different things like that then he becomes a lot better because then your two two becomes a three three and that type of stuff and but he is also only a two six for five Yes. Like he'll stick around. Um, but yeah, he's not outputting a ton of damage. Um, up next, I have Pre Vizsla. I'm not sure how relevant his leader side will be. Again, if you draw cards, like there's a couple cards in the set that allow you to draw more. Sure, it's nice, but also he's a four six for five leader. 
And if you happen to, I don't know, have six cards in your hand, now he's a 6-6 six, six for five? Or, you know, if you've got three, he's got Saboteur. It's just mostly just based off his um, leader, his leader side itself. And actually, I think uh, Red Villainy package is pretty good in this set as well. So that lends that to being pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I got Anakin Skywalker. Uh, I like Anakin a lot. Uh, he trades up. He's a very, very strong mid-range leader, I would assume. Just being able to trade up all your units. And when he comes out, it gets really scary. You know, there's a 4-7 overwhelm, but you get plus one for every five damage on your base. So you could be probably most likely a six or a seven, which can be very impactful. Uh, but, you know, you do damage your own base, and that's probably not the greatest <laughs> in a limited, limited format if you have no way of uh, reducing that. Yeah. Yeah, because you're not... Uh, up next, I have Mace Windu. Uh, you know, clearing off damage units uh, is actually pretty big in Limited. Um, so you can actually, you know, f- trade-ish, pseudo-trade with him by doing that. Um, and then a 5-8 body for 7 is Vader stats. <laughs> and that's not bad. I think Red is actually just really good in this set, uh, regardless of his villain or hero. So I think you can do damage with him. Uh, you, you can make his ability somewhat relevant. Like, grenade strikes are common. Like, you'll probably have one or two. <laughs> or three or four. <laughs> yeah, so um, you can get damage out there on the field for him. And the last one I have, and they're probably good or might be good, is uh, Quinlan Voss. It's hard to probably match your opponent stuff. Um, but, you know, you do have, you both have a limited pool. There's only so many cards, right? Uh, I think his leader side is lends us to being actually pretty decent. Uh, three, seven for five isn't the best, but doing one damage to an enemy unit. Uh, that costs the same or less is huge when you play units. So I think, again, just kind of trading favorably with him. And I think uh, Yellow Hero is actually a pretty solid pool as well between like Plo Koon and R2-D2 clear the field. Um, those are some pretty standout cards that I think can could be pretty legitimate with them. Yeah, I I think I think with I, okay, so I'm a little bit more high on Quinlan probably than you are, even in limited. And I think I agree with you that it is harder to match. But if we go through that the card pool sets, right? A lot of the card pool sets are creating you know units that are one cost, two cost, that type of a thing. There, there a lot of the costing units are very similar around there based on what your commons and uncommons are. And I think he's going to do a lot better than we think he is. I will tell you if I get enough hero cards, I will 100% be building Quinlan Voss and sealed. So I think, I think it's really good, personally. I, I think he's actually really solid and constructed for sure. I'm just a little bit iffy on like trying to go for the perfect matchup plays. I guess I would say in, in limited. Yeah. But him coming yeah. out on five with seven health, it, with no like leader removal in 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 this set as much as like we had in last set, feels really good with him. And that's, I think, where some of the difference is, is like, yeah, he only has three attack. Yes, you're right. We got some upgrades, though, baby. And he is a force unit, so he has a little bit more viability, I think. I think. I, I don't know. I'm very high on Quinlan, personally. No, I don't. I agree. Um, also, like, playing like Plo Koon uh, and also having Quinlan Voss out at the same time is that extra reach. You can one-shot a Kai Eddie Moody with Plo Koon. Mm-hmm. just running in in there um like just anything with seven health when he's out and a plocoon dies and that's that's a huge chunk of the board that's you can kill gore with that which is hilarious to me <laughs> uh, well you won't get the extra damage so maybe not but whatever anything that uh five or less is is pretty it like i i like quinlan i'm pretty high on him i probably should have put an asterisk next to him it really depends on what card pool you have so, so up next, the, I'm, 
Oh, go, go ahead. I was gonna say, yeah. So for for me, I think the big one is is understanding that like how your card pool works with your leaders, right? And I think that if you have like th- like Quinlan is the essential JJ character, ironically enough, <laughs> um, because you can build in sealed weird ty- style decks with different cost costy mechanisms and not have to worry about it as much as like you do in like a unlimited format. Um, but the, I I have to play it just for JJ. So just like I have to play it so I can put a one ofs of all these crazy cards in and then I can take a picture of it and be like, look, JJ, I won something with all these one ofs, baby. Fair. <laughs> uh, for the last ones for just leaders, I have probably not good in sealed. Uh, Padme, I think, is already not a particularly strong leader. Um, and just like it's cool drawing cards and filtering your deck is very strong uh requiring that you have a coordinate for that in a sealed environment does not seem good even if she has the restore one <laughs> um on her leader side i just don't i don't think there's much there uh, i don't no. think anyone will disagree with me on that either no i don't i don't think i don't think she's going to Unless you have a bunch of things that create clone troopers, I think you're kind of out of luck with her in yeah. sealed. Up next, I have Asajj. Uh, just mostly it's her leader size a 3 4. Cool, you get an extra attack to make it a 4 4 with a shoot first effect. Yeah, she comes out on 4, which is nice, but like, I don't, I don't think there's enough. It just like quality <laughs> there with her like you have to play an event so that's already kind of iffy and sealed and then all you do is then hit one extra again trading is really good trading up is very valuable but also you play an event and then your opponent can just be like okay well i killed this guy now and you don't have the attacker who gets plus one and i still live I, your your events are limited anyway in a yeah. smaller cool card pool. So I just don't. I I agree. I don't. I don't think she. Yeah, not I not limited. I'm a little bit iffy on her and constructed anyways, but limited. I I just like it's it's wonky. Mm-hmm. Up next, um, slightly controversial. Maybe I have Django, mostly because I don't think there's a lot of units that deal damage to other units in this. Um, that's like meaningful. I think in constructed he's a lot better. Um, but like the three seven body is just weird too. You're not like outputting a lot of damage with that. Yeah, you get to exhaust things and that can be pretty annoying. Uh but like what what units are you using to, to deal damage? Or like what 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 are you doing from from other things to deal damage to someone? Right? There's not a lot um intrinsically here. At least that I can remember. Like, there's, there's not. It's, it, 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 there is some stuff that has overwhelm that can work a little bit, and, but the problem is, is yeah, like for the most part, if you can get two units out in sealed, right, and one of them can trade, you can exhaust another one, and that can be kind of like disgusting. But at the exact same time, like all they're gonna do is clean the initiative, and then they're gonna be able to swing again. So you know, like it's you have to clear the board, and then you're not actually using his ability as much, and. He comes out like uh, uh, like a little bit worse off than Boba Fett does. He does have seven health, right? So like that is cool that he has seven health, but he sticks around. But that's that's about it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not as like again. I don't think like because I think it's sealed. You play a few smaller units, but you want your bombs. Like that's one of the big thing is you want these big like you. I won't say gore, but like something like a gore or a Zillow beast or something like some of these crazy like here let me put something on the board that's going to make you scared of me i just the sealed one i played in i pulled two wreckers you pull two wreckers i mean like it's pretty good like your odds are <laughs> high that you're going to be able to play it and then on top of it wreckers just like really really good in in a, in a sealed format and you got to i got two of them so it's like i had to build a hero even though i didn't want to i had to build a hero one because i had two wreckers because they're just so good for the format and that's i think that's where Django like there's that you're not going to have people aren't going to have enough units on the field for you to do this too, unless somebody's able to spawn a million droids. Um, but we can, we'll get to that in a little bit. 
So, and even then, you still have to have cards that exhaust them, and yeah. there's a pretty limited pool. Yes. Um, and then the last one, um, is Chancellor Palpatine. Yes, he has the most options out of anyone to build a deck around. But you're gonna tell me you're gonna sit down and then like build a, a highly optimized Chancellor Palpatine deck in half an hour while you're building your sealed deck? Um, I mean, maybe. Good luck. I just think um a lot of the the villain cards that you would love to have aren't nearly as impactful as it would be to just run someone else like Quinlan Voss. I think you'd, if you're going to go yellow hero, you might as well just go Quinlan if you're really that strongly compelled to that or something like Yoda and then your second piece be yellow. Mm-hmm. Right? Like I, 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 most about, options. I I'll put it. I'll let me just put it this way. The way, in my opinion, Chancellor Pebbleteen will work is if you're very, very, very good at building decks, you he can be in the green section. But you have to be very good at building decks to get that to happen. I am not good enough, in my opinion, in a sealed tournament to build a Palpatine deck. I don't think he'd be good, even if you're really good at building decks. You need consistency for a Chancellor Palpatine deck, and you're not going to get that in a limited carpool. Like, if you have, you know, seven, eight villain cards in your deck, you better make sure those villain cards are actually worth you playing him over someone else, and they're probably not going to be, and generally they're going to be one-offs. Yeah, and you get a lot more neutral cards in sealed than you do in, you know, or I guess I won't say neutral. I will say non-heroic, non-villain, yeah. color-coded cards. You're going to get a lot more of those than you do in the other ones. Let's let's move on. Let's not spend any more time on. Yeah, no, I mean that's that's all the leaders. I just, yeah. I, I'm not a big fan of Chancellor Palpatine and sealed. No, so we're just so going to hit up. I'll oh, go on. I was going to say I think this one's easy. The legendaries are easy. You're going to get one of them, maybe. If you're lucky, maybe yeah, you'll get two. Lucky. If Ooh. you if you get two, uh, congratulations. I guess I think the answer is if you get one and you have the cards around it, you just play that. You play that card. You <laughs> like that's the cards you play in seal. <laughs> yeah. So these are like just very impactful legendaries. Like that's their whole purpose. These are probably good. I got Grievous. You got four four for three. Ability irrelevant. So four four for three, and that's really strong. I think Kai Adimundi is really good because um, he's just a very well statted unit because <laughs> he's a 5 7 for 5, right? Um, with the upside of if your opponent plays two cards and you have three dudes out there, you just draw. <clears throat> um, that's just incredibly strong. Uh, you got Ayla Sakura. I have her in here uh, mostly because she's a 6 5. And. If you have a bunch of people out, she just doesn't take damage back, and that's huge in limited. But also, uh, six attack on five bodies, also huge, especially in limited, because that's like Poe, right? Like, mm-hmm. those Poe and Anakin levels. And you don't get Anakin here because he's in the starter packs. So, uh, Maul, I think, is solid just because he is able to clear out more bodies, especially if your opponent has a bunch of like droid units or whatever he can just take out two of them but he's just a five six for five again just pretty strong and well statted and then cad bane mostly because he's a tempo monster and he's also a seven seven for seven yeah i Uh, mean he's gonna come out steal whatever units you have on the board right and then yeah yeah. you 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 could get him back but it takes what three turns unless i'm readying him somehow right and you draw cards from that so that's huge yeah, like I'm... so I, I would play those legendaries for sure. Um, the might be good ones, Satine. I I don't know what you're trying to do. Trying to build someone out in limited format is hilarious to me. Uh, but if you can, you know it's a bonus. You only got thirty cards in your deck, right? So you actually have a, a much higher opportunity of milling someone out uh, without having a, a specifically milled deck. I have clone. Clone is super situational, but it can also copy your opponent's units. So if they dropped a bomb, you can clone it or clone one of your best units, right? Uh, 
up next is the Resolute. Uh, it's, it's a little bit between like this might be good and this might be bad. Uh, but it is e the uh, it is an eight eight in space. Yes, it technically sort of cost ten, but at that point you probably it costs one less for every five damage on your base, so it's probably going to cost like seven or so, um, possibly six. And then when you play when playing on attack, you know, just two damage to every enemy unit that shares the same name, so it just wipes out clone troopers and all that kind of stuff. So I think it's a, it could be marginally impactful. And the last legendary I think might be good is Ahsoka. Mostly because it's a 3-4 body for 3 that you can pop back up and put back down. The ambush happens occasionally if you know if you have less car, uh, cards than they do. I just think it's okay. It's not bad. Uh, for the bad ones, oh my god, okay. The Invasion of Christ, uh, Christophsis. The Invasion of Christophsis. Yeah, absolutely not. What are you doing? Don't don't play that. No, play it. Play it. Do it. Do it. Prove Alex wrong. I mean, so most of the legendaries are actually like double aspect because those are not something you generally want to build in sealed. So like that's why you like get, get Pyric Assault on here, <laughs> which which is probably not going to do much. <laughs> going to do nothing. Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, don't play that. Because that's a, that's not a board clear. Uh, gore is probably halfway between like probably bad and probably okay. I guess it kind of depends if you have like an exploit deck. He is sort of a bomb at best. Yeah. I'm not to get unlimited power. Oh god, don't pay eight for that, especially if you don't have your opponent doesn't have four units out. Uh, I think planetary invasion is also just not something you want. Um, There's the 12 drop exploit three ready three units. They get plus one and overwhelm. Not worth it. Uh, Chancellor Palpatine is, uh, you know, double yellow ready your tokens. No. And um, I have now there are two of them in here. I could probably asterisk that. It just requires a lot of very specific deck building that you're trying to build around. And if you don't have it by like turn two or three, there's kind of not a lot of value in it. It is like you're my only hope where you, you know, you pay three and you reduce the cost by five. So you're reducing the cost ultimately by two. And again, it's just very specific deck building requirements. There are a lot of force units and troopers and stuff. So you can, play it but like I don't I wouldn't go out of my way to specifically put that in a deck unless uh, you know unless I had a lot of really good synergy and that's kind of hard to pull in limited pool yeah let's move on to the rares um, we have a lot of bad ones in there I'm going <laughs> to just lead off by saying all rare bases are bad except for I will disagree with you on the one that spawns two battle droids if I get Ahsoka and I can build an Ahsoka, I'm playing that with Ahsoka. But you're also sacrificing six health for that. I've been playing it right now. currently right now. I've been playing it and doing very well with it. But you're not in a limited format at that point. That's true. <laughs> I'm just that's, saying that's a problem. That it's fine. Like I think that one's not too bad. I um, actually kind of like the yellow one as well, the Petronach Arena. I think that has some value there as well. Uh, but not unlimited. Just they, they aren't. Maybe if you have Maul or Anakin, you can play Patronaki just to, because they have Overwhelm and you can push them off the seven damage or whatever. But yeah, I don't think I'm going to go like in depth. With these these are just rares that I think would, you know, you should probably look out for. Like Malevolence, Lumi, Zillow Beast for sure. Poggle, I think is great. Uh, Kalani, Admiral Ularen, Hu Hu Yang, right? Mm -hmm. That's how you pronounce it. I always want to go Yang, but you know that oh, it's Hu Yang. Yang. Yeah, he he seems man. If you have a Sentinel, you play Hu Yang. Phew, have fun. Uh, I think General's Blade, just plus three, plus three. Bo Katan, uh, Duku, Generso, Saw Gerrera, Kit Fisto, Caught in the Crossfire. I think is sneaky good because you probably just two for one your opponent 
and that's huge in limited where they just kill two of their own guys and that, that that's a massive tempo swing even if it costs six um rush clovis and Ness, and the tranquility i think are all just pretty solid rares that might be good you got morgan and elsbeth mostly it's the restore on that i think for the republic is solid but if you have a lot of quality like republic cards and stuff like that that's uh, it's really good so that's it's a little little asterisk there i think roger rogers okay i have the high ground is okay um i the have the room. high ground in i can yeah. mass uh Amida, that's a little bit you pay the aspect penalty for him right because he's a double green but also when you play units you dig and that's really good and limited. Uh, the Clone Wars, Mace, Windows, Mace Windows Lightsaber, most because it's just a 2 2. Unnatural Life might be kind of interesting. Uh, Sabine, Slymore, Fives. I know you love Fives, but man, you need Clone for that. Uh, Shadowed Intentions might just be really hard to out. I probably should have asterisked that as well. And the Invisible Hand is okay. Everything else, man, I don't like a fine edition is not going to come up. Barris is just a 1 1. Like, what do you... The 1-1 one, one shirt has force, but you don't have the cards that have the force unlimited. Uh, Finn is just absolutely terrible. <laughs> uh, Finn, Finn's just a garbage card, I think, all, all the way I know, around. it's so tragic. But I will uh, tell you, I'm going to be playing Mr. Bones. Like, if I get a Mr. Bones, Mr. Bones is going in my deck if I'm playing red. I don't care. I'm going to play him, because it's Mr. Uh, Bones. Sure. Equalize might actually be kind of worth it. You get minus two, minus two, but you have to pay the extra aspect penalty for it. Foresight, honestly, because it gives you plus two health is the only reason why I'm just like, okay, it's okay. You're you're probably not going to guess the top card, but the plus two health ain't bad. Uh, consolidation of power, uh, the petition, the Senate in defense of Camino, corner of the prey, uh, Stella Guerrera. I think might not be great and limited, but pretty solid and, and constructed. It really depends on how many of those uh, particular sets of cards she has. Uh, I know there's Mr. Bones right there. Yeah, so not, I, not, I'm going to play it. <laughs> I'm going to play, off, off. play it off aspect, and I'm going to play it. Um, so even if I'm not running red, I'm going to play it. I don't care. Yeah, I'll just pay five for it. Yep, I'm going to. <laughs> yep, I will. Uh, Grill Insurgency. I don't even know why they made that card. <laughs> let alone it being good in here. Sam Hill is just super niche. If you have a lot of exploits, sure, but it's limited, so good luck. Eight from the Innocent, Impropriety Among Thieves, Unmasking the Conspiracy, Execute Order 66, and I don't think Brain Invaders will be good either in this. Like, there's no point to blank your own ability to blank theirs. You, you can't build a deck around that. It's limited. And then there's our Uncommon, and Common Cards... Oh God, I really don't want to go through these. We're not gonna we're not gonna read yeah. through all of them. I, like I think I think you know the highlight if you look at what a lot of these are doing, like calculating Magna Guard's got Sentinel, right? Like and it can give Sentinel more than once. That's why it's good. Um Captain Typhoon is kind of the same way. Like it benefits from that Sentinel generation, you know. Uh Confederate Tri Fighter stops people's bases from being healed. So that's really good, except for we're probably not going to see a million pounds of healing, but there is healing in certain leaders, right? So but also a three, three for three in space, and that's well statted. Yeah, um, heavy like is really good. Zero the hut. I think. I think if you take zero the hut and R two D two, I think those are like actually one of the top ones for that you should be looking out for. Um, if you're playing those those colors, R two D two just lets you dig turn one. Like I mean, that's just that's just good all the way around. Period. Yeah, I think clear the field is actually really good too. Uh, yep. yellow hero card, like you literally clear their entire field of droids or or uh, uh, troopers, right? Like you just name a card and then just they're all gone now. Weird. Um, we're not gonna go through the rest of them. I have the guide up for you so you could see it. Um, kind of same way with the un with the commons. Like again, a lot of these like. The idea here is for you to go through what we put together and say, hey, you could print these out too if you want. Like, if you guys don't like the one format in the Excel document, I can give you this document. We can do whatever people want. Um, but you can print these out and take them with you. I mean, I don't like, I don't 
think that's like not allowed. So like, go ahead and do it. Print them out. They look cool. I try to color code them. See, see, um, I noticed in this uncommon tier, there's missing one card though that I separated on a separate tier oh called Jar Jar Binks yeah. tier. And um, Jar Jar Binks tier is actually worse than the probably bad tier. Yeah, so bad get, that in fact it becomes good. I I actually want to just ban that card outright from playing anybody <laughs> in sealed. They have they even clarified how that card works yet? Just figure it out, man. Like, how are Basically. we gonna randomize this? So, like, if they don't come up with a way to tell me how to randomize this, um, I'm literally going to just give a number to everything and roll a freaking dice for it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I lo- don't forget it hits your base too. Like it could hit your base as well and your opponents. Yeah. So you have to factor bases in. Don't forget that. Yeah. So again, I really want one of these days. I, I Charger Banks is a terrible card, terrible, terrible card. But man, do I want to like accidentally lose because I played Jar Jar Banks and then <laughs> I, I attacked with Jar Jar Banks and then he hit my own base. Ooh, What's you that? can tie. Right? No, on attack happens first, so you can actually lose, and your yeah, opponent you has like immediately. Two to help out their base, <laughs> you lose because he hit yours first. That'd be incredible. I want that. That's the kind of chaos I live for. Yeah. Um, so just it kind of as a closing note, like I said, you can come back to our document, you can use the document all you want for pre release. Um, the big thing here is like understanding what your sentinels are, right? Where they come in, understanding what the big cards are, what is going to come in and be like super impactful, um, and what's going to be just kind of like. Mm. Again, Grievous, for example, if Grievous had been a common or an uncommon or something oh, like geez. that, that would he would just be so good. Not because he could carry lightsabers, but because he's a three cost four four, just that comes in and just says middle finger to you, and then all of that. So, um, I think I think as we kind of go through this, like that's kind of what I wanted to get across is here's what we feel are kind of the cards to look out for. This is kind of how you build your deck around. You know, you want to have if you have a 30 card deck, you want, you know, 20 of the green. And then if you can get 10 of the yellow, great. If you can't get 10 of the yellow, then, you know, I guess substitute in a few red. Um, I actually have been running a uh, 40 card ones um, just for the hell of it to see if it does anything. And like it doesn't like affect it. If you don't have enough like commonality in your cards, it's like playing a JDA deck. So. <laughs> That's 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 kind of what it's like. And so that's kind of how like I play sealed. Like I add a few extra cards in and call it a day and like say, hey, um, you know. It must be very thrilling to just never know what the next card is gonna be on your deck. Just yeah, like, oh, it could be good, it could be trash, we'll never know. <laughs> One of these days we'll be able to build a complete there'll be a leader that benefits us for doing that. That's that's what'll happen. <laughs> All right. Well, that was our pre-release uh, sealed discussion. Uh, I will clip that part of it and release it as a separate video for everybody as well in the next coming days. 